Hi guys, in this video I want to talk about um, the passaggio in the male voice. The passaggio is basically um, a point in a guy's voice where he feels, if he's not trained, then he feels a sort of break or a switch. Um, so often people, guys start singing ah, and then they suddenly sort of break. They can't, they're not able to kind of keep singing upwards. This happens for a number of reasons. Um, and the passaggio can be dealt with in different ways. Pop singers deal with it um, in a certain way. Uh, classical singers deal with it in, uh, in a slightly different way. And they get, they get different results, but that's also because they are aiming to have different kinds of sounds. Now, a large part uh, of the, a large part of why we have uh, problems with passaggio is uh, to do with vowels. So vowels are basically, uh, in English we have loads of different vowels, but in, in Italian they have a, e, i, o, u, and those are the ones that are normally uh, taught when, uh, when singers start off, um, especially because a lot of uh, classical singing uh, starts with uh, Italian uh, arias, and those are the main vowels. We can think about those ones uh, now, even though uh, there are in English there are loads of different other vowels like a, a, e, e, and so on. The point is that a vowel, so if I say, if I say a, as in car, a vowel is a shape of the vocal tract. And um, it's, very, it's a complex sort of interaction of frequencies and harmonies and so on. But very, very simply, when I say a, my, my vocal tract is in, a, is in a certain shape. And as I sing higher and higher and higher, um, I'm not able to... I'm not able to produce the, the same vowel without changing something uh, because it's the interaction of frequencies that actually go, which make the, the vowel sound, which make the R. Um, as you sing higher, obviously the frequencies are changing. And so uh, what normally happens when a singer is not trained is that the, uh, the larynx starts to rise in order to try to maintain that vowel sound um, uh, adapting to the different frequencies. And that's why you often get a very pinched sound. People sing, ah, to try to keep the same sound. Whereas what they should do is let the sound modify uh, in accordance with the changing frequencies. And it's actually not a problem if you let it modify because for people listening, they don't perceive that the vowel is changing. They hear the same vowel because you have consonants on either side. On either side. For example, if you say car, if I say car and car, car, even though the vowel is slightly different, uh, they, still, they still hear car because of the, of the consonants uh, which go with it. And in any case, uh, it's more difficult to hear notes up in the higher range. So, uh, how do pop singers deal with the passaggio? Well, you have, there are two sets of, of muscles basically in our vocal cords. So you have the uh, thyroarytenoid muscles, which, are called, which we call TA, the TA muscles. Uh, and those are what make the vocal cords kind of thick, like that, uh, thick and kind of long, if you like, uh, thick and wide. And then you have the uh, cricothyroid muscles, or the CT muscles, and those are what make them uh, long and narrow. We generally are more used to using the TA muscles uh, because when you speak, uh, you're, you're uh, normally speaking towards the, the bottom of your uh, vocal register. And we don't often say like, hey, but we, I mean, you could say, it. hi, how are you doing? Uh, <laughs> We generally, we tend to speak sort of as I'm doing now, like towards the bottom of my register. So uh, the cricothyroid muscles are not used uh, that much. And uh, actually they do need to be used when you're singing higher. Um, so naturally uh, the vocal cords go from this position, they should go from that and they should end up kind of more like that. In fact, if you say like, ah, yeah, and you're, that is exactly what's happening with your, uh, your vocal cords. So going from this position to that position. Um, 
But uh, what happens when beginners start singing is that they don't allow that process to happen. They don't let the this kind of uh, flip of the of the larynx happen, and they don't let the uh, vocal cords narrow. And so they they kind of get all this muscle tension here because they're not really letting it happen as it should, and that's why the voice breaks. Now, um, so I was talking earlier about the word car, right? So if I say something like, um, uh, let's see, this is on F3. I love my car, I love my car. What pop singers generally tend to do is they practice a lot using uh, falsetto, which is the, or the, uh, if you like, the, uh, the CT muscles, so let's see those ones, which make it long and narrow. Um, and then they, they use a lot of falsetto, and it's very easy to sing in falsetto. And you can actually have the same vowel sound uh, from low to high if you're using falsetto. So I can say, I love my car. And then on F4, I, um, I love my car, my car, my car is very nice. I love my car. My car is very nice. Um, that sounded a bit shit. <laughs> but uh, if you take a song like, I don't know, like, I, I love you, baby. I love you, baby. I love you, baby. I love you, baby. That's a more kind of pop sound. Uh, and they're very happy. Guys uh, often use this kind of um, C, we say CT dominant sound. And you don't have to really uh, modify uh, the vowel too much uh, because uh, this, um, in this case, uh, the, you're, you're not really using um, any C, uh, C, sorry, TA. Uh, muscles, it's a bit, almost a sort of pure CT uh, muscle sound, um, but you get that complete shift uh, of, uh, of timbre. It's not, if you say, car, and you say, car, you can hear, it's completely different, they're two uh, completely different uh, registers, if you like. So, but it's so, pop singers can sing, male pop singers can sing with that, I love my car, my car is very cool, yeah, my car is very cool. Because they don't need to project. But obviously an opera singer couldn't sing uh, with falsetto like that because no one's going to hear it. So an opera singer needs to maintain uh, more uh, TA, which is the, the, the thick uh, um, uh, muscles needs to maintain more TA action as he's going up. Uh, and in this, and so in order to do that, he also needs to uh, resist a lot with the air. Um, so you're using more diaphragmic uh, action, if you like. When we talk about support, it's actually letting less air through. Often people have the wrong idea about what support is. Sometimes you think it's like you should be, uh, uh, you should be pushing air sort of through your cores. That's completely wrong. In fact, uh, one of the a good exercise for practicing uh, improving your singing and projection and so on is to take a breath and hold it. And then you almost want to kind of maintain that same idea uh, of holding your breath as you're singing. Um, uh, so you can do exercises like taking a breath, hissing like that to kind of get the sensation of natural support. Um, so, uh, if we say, like, I, I love my car, an opera singer on the F4 would need, oh, this is quite high actually, um, but would need to maintain more, uh, C, uh, CT action, but you can't sing R, ah. you can't sing the same vowel R ah sound higher up, because as we talked about earlier with the frequencies and so on, it's just impossible. So he has to let it change to a more of a sort of uh sound. So, I love my car. I love my car. Um, it's, it's, uh, you can hear it kind of changes the, the frequency. 
But how can you, you can't, you don't want to suddenly change uh, kind of resonance or sound from one moment to the next. So um, for both pop singers and for uh, opera singers, it needs to be a kind of a gradual process. And I think the best way to navigate the passaggio, which for a tenor is probably around an F4, and for a baritone like me, it's, it's more like an A3 or a B3. Uh, this is the point at which, if you don't use the, the, C, uh, the CT muscles, i.e., if you don't start using the long ones deliberately, uh, then you get that break. What you can do is try to uh, deliberately integrate uh, the use of CT muscles from a lower point so that when you go up, uh, you don't have to sort of suddenly switch and say, shit, I need to start using these kind of longer, thinner muscles. Um, so uh, you can, if you get the feeling of using the CT muscles, bring it down, and then you can kind of mix it with a uh, more uh, TA dominant sound. Um, and that's what gives in what they call in, in opera chiaro scuro, which is dark light. So if I say, <coughs> I, um, let me see. I, my love, my car, I love my car, I love my car. Uh, if I did it only with like T, A, I love my, uh, it's gonna, you can already, you kind of, <laughs> You kind of uh, anticipate there's going to be a, it's going to just go wrong. So I've got to let the I've got to let the CT muscles play a part in there, and that's also it makes them a more of a vibrato sound. You'll notice that it's much easier to have vibrato higher up. Uh, which is uh, CT muscles. You get kind of vibrato by letting CT muscles play a part and uh, sorry, um, lower down in your in your range too. So, what can we do to uh, get over the passaggio? Um, how can you start feeling this? Well, for example, an E vowel generally has kind of more uh, CT uh, um, action in it. Closed vowels. Uh, it's easier to, to kind of naturally use uh, the CT muscles, the thin, long ones. Um, vowels like E are good. So, for example, if you start on, let's say, on F, F3, uh, starting with R, and then you can go up to sort of, you can change it to an E at the top. Um, uh, you've got to play around with it a lot. It's not going to come in a day. Um, and then eventually you can you can do a whole octave. Uh, you can go like a, um, an arpeggio. It shouldn't feel too difficult. Remember, don't try not to let it. Uh, try not to let your throat do any work. You want your diaphragm to be taking the pressure. Um, let the vowel modify as you're going up. If we say ah. <clears throat> Using the the CT muscles from the beginning. Uh, or an E vowel. E is going to sort of change more of an E. Uh, and uh, I could do um, R A E O O. Oh. Kind of goes to an oh, almost an oh sound. Uh, also, what you hear in your head is going to also sound different from what your listener uh, will hear too. Remember, there's no, there's no one 
right way to to sing notes. So I mean, if you want to sing, for example, a C four. Baby, I love you. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me. Baby, baby, baby. You're the only one for me, baby. You can do that. It's fine,、um, and you can work on that, and then you're going to get、uh, a different kind of sound from an operatic sound.、Um, And obviously, the more you practice certain coordinations,、uh, the, the the stronger that sound is going to be. So, if you're going for a very very、uh, C T、uh, dominant sound, very falsetto sound,、um, then you,、uh, which is more typical of pop, then that's what you can kind of cultivate, and that's great.、Uh, and you can practice mixing that with your、uh, with your C T、uh, dominant sounds、so、from the from the bottom. Baby, I love you. Baby, you're the only thing that's ever been fair for me. Baby, you're the only thing. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up.、Uh, but you know, you can just practice、um, mixing,、uh, trying things out, seeing what works,、um, and then you'll get there in the end. Oh, I hope that was helpful.、Uh, if you have any questions, then.、Uh, Let me know, and if I can answer them, then I definitely will. Ciao.